My name is Pete Batke. I'm uh, located in Ripon, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm a Greenland County Farm Bureau president. Um, I have 300 acres of land. Recently transitioned from dairy farming to fattening and finishing cattle. And I grow a wide variety of crops like corn, soybeans, winter wheat, and some alfalfa. And I'm working on doing some, a lot of new conservation practices. I've been doing some cover crops over the years, but I want to incorporate that more into my farming system and just conserve the water and soil the best I can. So sustainability is important to me because I want to create a healthy soil and conserve the soil and water resources, not only for myself, but for the next generations to come. And plus I want to put a little like a financial um, economics to it. And, you know, putting cover crops on and, and, and doing a lot of these practices may not always give you more money, but it's going to be healthier for your soil. And, and more sustainable in the end. So that's that's the way I'm looking at it. So I've been doing a lot of cover cropping over the over the, probably the last 10 years, pretty much started with rye. And um, over the last roughly seven, uh, since the Green Lake County Farm Bureau partnered up with the, the Green Lake Association, we've been doing the Conservation Field Day. And we've been doing so many examples of uh, conservation practice, you know, cover crop, no-till, different cover crops you could use, doing some crimping on some, um, like standing um, cover crop in the spring, probably through rye typically. But working with this field day and through other farmers that have been involved in it, it's really made me think about this a lot more and just bouncing ideas off the other, other farmers in my area too. I mean, uh, sometimes what works for one doesn't work for the other and everyone looks at it differently. There's about a million ways to put cover crops on or different cover crops to use. and. Uh, you know, some guys want to use just some barley. And last year I used some uh, clover, some turnips, some radishes, and some barley, uh, all in one mix. And that worked well, but the cost is a little higher there versus using just a barley or a rye. The options are endless when it comes to cover crops. So the, the management for doing cover crops um, really changes the game because you've got to be thinking of what chemicals you're going to spray for your weed control before you even plant your crop. Because if you want to interseed into corn or to wheat or whatever you want to do, you have to have that well thought out because you put the wrong uh, product down and you're not going to grow a cover crop for, for six months or, or, or more. So you got to be really be thinking. So the management has to really be stepped up to a whole new level and it has to be well thought out and thought through. Personally, I thrive on challenges because that always makes me think outside the box. So um, like last year, I rented a drill from the, like, the, the county and it wasn't a lot of money, but it kind of turned into a train wreck. And I put all my seed on in just a few acres and uh, it made it kind of expensive. Um, this year I purchased a used drill from a, uh, a neighbor uh, farmer. And I'm really, since I have my own machine now, I will be able to apply cover crops and, and, and put my own alfalfa on, winter wheat on as well, uh, when I want to. And uh, plus I'll have a better handle on what I'm doing. We just recently got auto steer on two tractors for planting, spraying, and uh, and drilling, no-till drilling, and so on. We've had GPS for a number of years, um, just the basic models on tractors for spreading fertilizer and spraying. But now I'm taking it to a whole new level, and it should should be more beneficial by not over applying seed or spray. Um, it'll it'll be a win-win all the way around. So my goal is moving forward. You know, I have last year was the first year I put cover crops on after winter wheat. And this year my plan is to put cover crops on after the soybeans come off. Um, my plan is to no-till some cover crops into the soybean stubble. And I may put something on my corn stalk, uh, you know, corn after we harvest corn, but I'm not sure what and how yet, because that gets kind of late. So maybe a rye or a, uh, a barley. It seems like our winters don't come until later. So you have a lot of opportunity and you could at least get something established uh, yet in the fall. So, so last year, uh, last fall, I got involved with the Upper Fox Wolf Demo Farms. I'm um, new to that, but it's kind of a nice resources. I get some really good advice and uh, guidance doing it, and it's gonna be kind of a neat, a neat resource to, to move forward, especially doing all this sustainability practices I'm trying to do. Farm Bureau has, has been really helpful with the sustainability practices. Actually, I was one of the members on a committee that actually come up with Farm Bureau's sustainability mission statement. And uh, and just um, by connecting with other Farm Bureau members and Farm Bureau's initiatives of, of funding for, for um, 
conservation sustainability has gone a long ways. Um, actually, us in our county, after working with this field day for six or seven years, we're, we're pretty we're pretty close to starting a, a watershed group of our own, farmer-led watershed group, and uh, we haven't really crossed the bridge yet, but um, we're uh, kind of on the edge of starting something like that in our in our county. So it's kind of exciting.